from Lagos, the nation's commercial capital. This is the news at 10, live from Channels Television. Reported tonight, Amarachi Ubani. Good evening and welcome tonight. State assemblies transmit constitution to the Senate and laws overwhelmingly financial autonomy for local governments. Federal government vows to protect the nation's uh, from nation from ter terrorist groups. Uh, commits officers who died fighting Boko Haram to Mother Earth. Federal government and oil workers strike deal as union leaders call off warning strike. And Pakistan carries out two executions. The first sends a death penalty moratorium was lifted in the country. On business news, global crude oil prices rally marginally in pre-holiday trading as investors expect further falls unless supply of the commodity tightens or demands picks up. On sports news, FIFA president Sepp Blatter plays down credibility crisis as fallout from the 2018 and 2022 World Cups bidding process threatens its image. Federal High Court in Benin City, Edo State, has ruled that prisoners should be able to vote in all national and local government elections. Justice Mohamed Lima said it would be unlawful to deny inmates the rights to vote in any election in the country. Now, earlier this year, nearly 57,000 prisoners across the country were disenfranchised. In the meantime, the Akita State Election Petition Tribunal sitting in Abuja today dismissed the petition filed by the All Progressives Congress, the APC, against the election of Governor Ayodele Fayoshe. The petition was dismissed on all grounds by the chairman of the tribunal, Justice Mohammed Ibrahim Siraju. Justice Siraju insisted that the petitioner failed to substantiate the allegations of his petition with evidence. Now, in his judgment that lasted over four hours, Justice Siraju held that the petitioners failed to prove all the allegations raised against the governor. The opposition party, All Progressive Congress, had, amongst other issues, demanded that the election of fire shade be nullified because it was heavily militarized and that its officers and members were arrested, molested and detained during the election. The party also claimed that Fayashi was not qualified to have stood for the election in the first instance, having been indicted by a probe panel and impeached during his first tenure of office for breach of code of conduct. They also claimed that his educational qualification was falsified, as such he should not have stood for the election. In its judgment, the tribunal said it was surprised that the petitioner failed to name the officers and members that were arrested and molested. On the issue of his previous impeachment in 2006, the tribunal held that there was no evidence present to back the allegation and that it is only a court of competence jurisdiction or the code of conduct tribunal that can indict anyone for breach of code of conduct and not an administrative panel of inquiry, as is in the case of Governor Ayo Fayoshi. The tribunal dismissed the entire petition and subsequently upheld the election of Governor Ayo Fayoshi as a truly elected governor of Ekiti State. The tribunal has painstakingly dealt with all the issues raised in the petition in favor of His Excellency Mr. Ayo Fayoshi, and the tribunal has commendably followed existing authorities of decisions of superior courts to the effect that it is only a court of competent jurisdiction that cannot judge a man guilty of an offense. And clearly, the so-called report of investigation panel that purportedly found our client guilty has been invalidated, has been held not to be of no consequence in law. In the Akiti State uh, uh, election, governorship election petition, which was heard after full contest, the uh, tribunal was of a firm view that um, besides the inadequacy of the petition, 
on the merits of the petition that they failed to establish the facts on which they based the petitions and um, dismissed the petition, affirming the return of uh, Governor Fayoshek. It is not yet over in this case, as the All Progressive Congress has the right of appeal to the two courts above to prove their allegation of fraud in the state governorship election. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. In the meantime, the All Progressives Congress says it will appeal the ruling of the tribunal because the justice did not say that the issues raised were untrue. Spokesperson for the APC, Nikiti State, Mr. Taiwo Olatobosun, insists that the party will get justice from the appeal court because it raised issues of perjury against the PDP candidate Ayo Fayoshi, who they say stormed the court to disturb proceedings before the trial judge, Justice Femi Ogunyemi. The APC therefore called on the NJC to intervene in what it calls a miscarriage of justice on the part of the tribunal. Meanwhile, the All Progressives Congress has begun its defense against the petition filed by the People's Democratic Party and its candidate before the election petition tribunal hearing matters arising from the August 9 governorship election in Oshun State. Our counsel to the APC, who is also the vice presidential candidate of the APC, Professor Yemi Ushibajo, at the opening of the defense led four witnesses who were APC party agents during the election in evidence before the panel led by Justice Elizabeth Ipejime to testify that the election in their respective units was hitch-free and without any form of malpractice. The four witnesses when cross-examined by the petitioner counsel, Mr. Nathaniel Oki, all affirmed that the election in their units was neither manipulated nor was there intimidation of any sort as claimed by some of the petitioner's witnesses. The PDP and its candidate, Mr. Iyola Omishere, are challenging the result of the August 9, 2014 governorship election in 17 local government areas in the state. The tribunal has adjourned till Saturday, December 20th. We hope to see that this, we hope to see clearly that this was a free and fair election and that the APC won the elections fair and square. That's what, this was, that, that's what we certainly hope to see. Yeah, we are all making progress. The important thing is that the Oshun state people are very, very interest, uh, interested to see the end of these proceedings. And uh, you will see that for the past one week, it has been a dead and, I mean, die and rise affair with the defense. But today they've been able to summon four people, as against that of two days ago when they were only able to come up with uh, two people. Our state houses of assembly have voted overwhelmingly for financial autonomy for state legislatures across the federation. A chairman conference of speakers made this known as the state legislators transmitted the resolutions to the National Assembly on the areas up for amendment in the 1999 Constitution. Our correspondent, Linda Akibe, reports. Another critical step to the amendment of the 1999 Constitution has been made. After nearly two months, state legislators are here to submit to the National Assembly the resolutions approved by the state houses of assembly on the areas up for amendment in the 1999 Constitution. <laughs> The chairman conference of speakers of the state houses of assembly gave details of some of the resolutions passed by the state houses of assembly. Is the president, respected members of the national assembly, let me announce that we have exceeded the requirement for the financial autonomy of state legislatures. We have also exceeded the required two thirds for the strengthening of other institutions sought for, such as splitting of the Office of Attorney General from that of the Minister of Justice, creation of Accountant General of Federal Government Office, and other and strengthening of the laws passed by the legislature as well as resolutions, amongst other things, actions we have agreed to, as will be seen when this submission is analyzed. But the chairman conference of speakers was silent on whether the state houses of assembly granted autonomy to local governments.
the Senate and the House of Representatives had approved autonomy for local governments. I have not read the areas where you have uh, gotten more than uh, the required percentage, that is 24 states approving, so I can't make any comment on it, but the speaker uh, of Aquaibon State said that you've, uh, that the one of uh, state legislature has passed um, the required test, in other words, autonomy, financial autonomy of the state legislature. So I think that uh, that was one of the areas where, in the First Amendment, uh, the state assemblies didn't have the courage to do it. But I must congratulate you because that is very key. One of the other areas which I think uh, we asked you to approve was uh, local government autonomy. I don't know whether you've had the courage to do that, but if you haven't had it, there is no problem with it. It's a continuous exercise. The National Assembly would now have to pass the Constitution Amendment Bill and send to President Jonathan for assent. Linda Akibe, Channels Television News. Let's bring you more now from Ekiti State, where the 19 All Progressives Congress members of the Ekiti State House of Assembly have held a plenary sitting in Adwekiti. The state capital had suspended factional speaker Dili Ulubimi and the six lawmakers loyal to him. At the sitting, presided over by the speaker, Dr. Dewale Omiri, the APC, APC lawmakers also nullified all legislative activities purportedly carried out by the PDP caucus, including the receipt and consideration of the 2015 appropriation bill. They also resolved to relocate the sittings of the House to the campus of the Akita State University, citing the taking over of the assembly complex by thugs and miscreants. The lawmakers also voted in favor of the local government autonomy and constitutional amendment given autonomy to the House of Assembly. Well, back here in Lagos, as a race of the 2015 elections hots up, the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, has urged all APC stalwarts who contested the primaries to rally around the party's governorship candidate, Mr. Akiwumi Ambodi. Governor Fashola says it is important to build a strong team for him, even if it means offering the people who helped them campaign during the primaries. He said this at the Lagos House where he held a meeting with them. And in part two after the break, federal government promises appropriation act, appropriate actions uh, to cushion the immediate impacts of the deaths of any members of the armed forces on their families.